Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thanks once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Montegrappa Elmo Chiaroscuro Fountain Pen. Before I get started, let me remind everyone to check out the Pentertainment Podcast, available on iTunes and Podbean. Just be forewarned, it's not for children. You have been warned. This pen was provided to me by Goulet Pens free of charge in exchange for a fair and unbiased review. Thank you very much to Margaret of Goulet Pens for thinking of me for this review. So I've been over the Montaguapa brand in the past. If you want more detailed information on the brand, such as dates and stuff, Check out those reviews when you're done with this one, that is. But regarding the Elmo, the line was first introduced back in August of 2018. Like our pen here today, that pen was a Goulet exclusive and sold for $175. It was hailed at the time for its affordable price, for the brand that is, and was a move in the direction of an entry-level pen. Its appeal was in the uncompromising quality despite it being cheaper than any other Montegrappa pen offered. Since its initial release, the Elmo has seen subtle changes to its design, such as clip designs, as well as a move from the barrel threads being acrylic to metal. We've also seen different retailer exclusives, as well as regular series colors. One of the most noticeable changes comes in the form of in-house decisions made by the brand. As of the launch of the Elmo Kiroskola, we are introduced to an Elmo whose build was made entirely in-house, from the furniture to the nib to the brand's very own poured acrylic. This is no doubt a bold move by the brand in the direction of manufacturing independence, but it does come at a cost. Literally, in fact. See, since the initial launch, the cost of the pen has gone up incrementally with every series. Were the changes necessary? Maybe. But the real question to ask was, was it worth it? Stick around and find out. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are either good or bad or can be good or bad, depending on you. The nib is a number six size stainless steel nib. It's decorated with the standard Montegrappa logos. Under the breather hole is the brand name as well as the country of manufacture. Under that is an M to indicate that this is a medium. The feed is a standard Yovo feed and reminds me of the underside of a cockroach. The nib and feed are friction fit into a Yovo housing that screws into the acrylic section. The section threads are acrylic and is equipped with a metal chimney that is used to screw the included threaded converter. The section screws into the metal threads of the barrel. The rest of the barrel is the in-house custom-made acrylic that is the star of today's show. It tapers down to the rounded end. The cap is more the same acrylic as the barrel, sharing the same tapered design. The clip is an L-bracket style clip that attaches to the underside of the cap. The end of the clip has a small wheel put there to make sliding into pockets easier, which is certainly a good thing considering that the clip is definitely on the tighter side. The cap doesn't have a center band. Instead, in its place is a painted in engraving of the brand name. The pen was packaged in a plain gray sleeve. Slide that off and you have a flip open gray box. Open that up and you have your pen resting comfortably atop a bedding inside a plastic pen body bag. Also included is a dime bag containing a blue and black ink cartridge. Under the bedding is a secret compartment with a Montegrappa information booklet that has remained unchanged since the dawn of time. The included converter is pre-installed in the pen. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. So it seems nowadays Yovo nibs are everywhere, which could be bad in that if every pen writes the same, it could be boring. But it could also be good in that the writing quality is consistently good. And such is the case with this. Like most of my pens sporting Yovo nibs, this pen is a joy to write with. It's smooth and is on the drier side. Now don't get me wrong, it's not so dry that it feels like it's about to starve. It's just one notch under the middle of wet and dry. This ever so slight dryness gives the nib a feel similar to writing with a graphite pencil, yet is still smooth. Just not stylus on iPad type smooth. I also love the balance of this pen. It's very well balanced, whether posted or not, due to the metal sleeve inside the barrel. The cap posts just fine and goes in about an inch. I prefer to write with it unposted because posting it has a bit of a squeaky creaky feel to it that gives me an uneasy feeling that it could cause micro scuffs on the barrel. When it comes to the aesthetics of the pen, I have to say it's really, really nice. Yeah, I got good words. 
It's so rich and complex. There's nothing in the way of transparency, yet the mixture of colors creates a depth that is unique. I like it. I like it a whole lot. And not just because my favorite color is green, but because it's so unique and looks like something found in nature, like some sort of a natural rock or something. It's really pretty. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen has an MSRP of $295, but with the good folks at Goulet Pens, you can score this pen for a discounted price of $239. They are even offering a free Montegrappa two pen leather case valued at $130. This is for a limited time. Now, that's not a bad deal. Unless, of course, you don't really want the case or care for the case in which the conversation then changes. Let me explain why. Now, it's not that I don't think that the cost of the pen warrants the price or not. It's just that I really don't like the price going up incrementally ever since the release of the first version. And with every version that came out after that. I remember the first version that came out had a discounted price of $175. Then after that, the Fantasy Bloom series came out and that was priced at $195. Now with that price increase, I still thought that it was crazy and it was a good bang for the buck, being that you're scoring a Montegrappa acrylic pen for under 200 bucks. Then I realized that the appeal was in the fact that it was under $200. With the cost being under $200, Montegrappa was now answering the challenge of Italian pen brands like Leonardo Officina Italiana with their sub $200 Italian made acrylic pens. I thought that Montegrappa was now broadening their reach with lower cost pens so that people without thousands of dollars to spend and or possibly have no interest in pens that are decapitated samurais or nearly functional rockets could now experience the brand without sacrifice to quality or craftsmanship. Now, like I said, I don't think the price is too bad, but I am disappointed in the brand's decision to move even further away from that affordable price. I'm also thinking that the brand is consistently testing the waters as to how far they're able to stray from the original price. Now, knowing what I know about the brand and the cost going into production of this pen, sure, I think it's a fair price, but that's me. And for sure, there are going to be those people that won't see the value and the cost. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. I'm going to say that I'm more than impressed with the quality of this pen. Despite this pen not being the brand's top money maker, it is clear that there were no sacrifices made in the production of this pen. I always fine tooth comb all my pens upon acquisition on an emotionally disturbed level. And with this pen, I found nothing to bitch about. So in regard to the ugly, I really got nothing to say. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon. Decision making time. Should you or should you not pull a trigger on the Monte Grappa Elmo Chiaroscola fountain pen? Say that 10 times fast. I really enjoy this pen and everything it has to offer. I do think that the price is fair given the fact that there is a lot that went into the production of the pen. I do, however, think that for many people, the additional cost, although not that bad, will be enough to break the deal. And for those people, I can honestly say that I don't blame you. If you're in the market for a sub $200 pen, there are plenty of options out there that is close to the pedigree that this pen has. Where it is that this pen stands out is in the custom acrylic that is truly one of a kind. So if you love this material and are willing to fork over the coin, I'd certainly say that you're going to be a happy camper. If you are able to snag the limited time offer of the free leather pen case, I'd say even better. But if you're not completely seduced by the material, then I would say that you could better be suited buying a pen that is sub $200 with a similar pedigree and save yourself some cash, such as the Fantasy Bloom series or even other brands such as Leonardo Officina Italiana fountain pens. That was my review of the Monte Grappa Elmo Chiro Scola Goulet exclusive fountain pen. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.